10 million years or so, if a, a, a comet of that size only hits every billion years or so, and now to invoke a comet that's actually broken, and it can't have been broken for very long because if it's spreading, you know, at a rate that's greater than the uh, escape velocity, well then maybe only one piece is going to hit. It's it, the, the, the size of the broken comet, the cluster, is actually bigger than the size of the Earth. And if it hasn't, if it's not spreading by a, a rate greater than the escape velocity, well then it recoalesces and it becomes a single object again. So now it's even a more extreme improbable event. So my main argument is uh, against this is it's so improbable that something like this could have happened. It seems almost like a magic bullet hypothesis. So I'll stop there. I would like to open it up to questions from the audience at this point. Can I say just <laughs> <laughs> Back before we went to Apollo, Harold Urey, a Nobel Prize laureate, uh, was looking over uh, at that time the two main origins of the moon. And both were proven to be impossible. And Harold says the moon does not exist. So I think that's where we are. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Uh, the, the question is, uh, what caused the ice melt that seems that has been proposed to have shut down the Atlantic conveyor and changed the climate, at least in the northern hemisphere? What, what's, uh, what would have caused the ice to melt? Well, it, the ice uh, was going through deglaciation anyway. We're not sure that's an exact connection, but the, it's well known that any kind of impact into the ground creates a lot of thermal energy. If it hit the ice, the same, same thing would have happened. Now the curious thing about, there were uh, what they call uh, Heinrich events, they're purges, where the, they're, they're huge breakups of the edge of the ice sheet and the North Atlantic became flooded with icebergs. Well that happened on the average every 2,000 years, but it also happened at 12.9. But the difference was that that event was unlike all of the others. There was a predictable pattern that they saw for the breakup of the ice sheet, uh, and the one at the time of the impact uh, was not common. It was very, very different, and leading some of the researchers to hypothesize that it didn't fit the pattern. In fact, they didn't even include it as one of those melting events for a long time, and so they had to go back. They had called them Heinrich 1, 2, 3, 10, and they had excluded this event. They finally went back and called it Heinrich 0 because they hadn't started numbering it as 1. But it was so unusual. But what happened is, what we think is, that the explosions over the ice sheet are capable of generating uh, seismic events. When Tunguska blew up, they detected it on seismometers in many places around the planet, so it looked like an earthquake. So it's capable of sending shock through the atmosphere to the ground. The ice sheet was already unstable, breaking off at the edges, so the idea is that, and this is well known, not by us, third-party research has shown that 12,900 years ago, the entire coastal edges of the ice sheet began to calve and break off. And not only that, the ice dams failed at all these string of big lakes, like Agassiz, Lake Hind, if you were there last night, a whole series of these glacial lakes there was a cascading meltwater flow that was suddenly and inexpli inexplicably blocked going south through the Mississippi, and instead it routed out north and east off the ice sheet. And when that happened, the entire North Atlantic became filled with icebergs, which cooled it just like they cool a drink of water, and it became capped with meltwater. And that shut down the conveyor, which triggered the climate change. Now, as Mark rightfully pointed out, there, there are any number of climate changes, and you don't have to say, well, every climate change required an impact. There are lots of reasons climate changes happen, and most of them are related to the conveyor. When that conveyor shuts down, it's like the plumbing system, the hot water plumbing system for your house. 
if you shut off the heat in your house, it gets cold. Well, the same thing happens to the ocean. Without that conveyor, no water into the North Atlantic. The North Atlantic became very cold, and so did the eastern seaboard, Greenland, and Europe. And you can see it in all the records. Now, we don't know that there's an exact connection. That might well be coincidental. But the fact that it happened exactly at the time, and in late time in particular, where we've gone down and sampled the cores, right at the level where the ice dam failed, and we know that because of the change in the flora and fauna in the lake, we know that the lake the catastrophically drained right at the time of the event. We find iridium, diamonds, carbon spherules, magnetic spherules in this very, very thin layer exactly where the dam failed and exactly where the Younger Dryas began. Now, maybe that's a coincidence. There are odd coincidences in geology and nature. We don't dispute that. But we're suggesting that there's likely a connection. <coughs> the ice be able to absorb the energy and, and not leave the crater? I think that's the question. Yeah, and there, uh, it's, a, it's a complicated question, but uh, for those of you that were last night, you saw the Ames vertical gun experiments with Pete Schultz. Well, Pete looked at this very uh, question. What happens when you take an impactor and you hit it into a block of ice? What does it do to it? What does it do to the substrate beneath the ice? And curiously enough, he found that it's angle dependent. Now, Mark mentioned that these large 300-meter uh, objects couldn't make it, would make it through the atmosphere, but that's not true. Uh, under certain conditions, they don't, and it's angle-dependent. Now, it's just as likely that an object come in at 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45, or 90, every one of those is equally probable. It can come in, particularly if it's a comet, comets are known to come in from any direction, so it could have hit Earth from any direction. What Pete found is that at 30 degrees or less on his angle, if he took uh, what the equivalent was a two kilometer object and he blasted that at cometary speeds into a two kilometer thick ice sheet, it would have blown a two kilometer hole and absolutely untouched. <laughs> <laughs> run out of gas. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, I think I think Mark may have a comment on the whole angle impact. Alan needs to finish. Alan, Alan needs to say what? Did you that answer your question? Yeah. No, we don't really know. <laughs> which, which four of your questions didn't that answer? <laughs> 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 Didn't hear you at less than or equal to 30 degrees. Yeah. That